Okay, now we're going to move into modeling integer subtraction. Modeling is pretty easy overall, and addition makes it seem like it's going to continue to be easy. And then we come and get subtraction, and subtraction just goes and messes everything up because it is not as easy or straightforward as adding is. Let's take it easy, and let's go through the first one. The first, one we're going to look, the first way we're going to look is using symbols. Notice that the instructions at the top tell you, hey, draw the symbol first to represent the first number, plus for positive, minus for negative. Then you're going to draw an X over the number of symbols to take away the second number. So without getting into the zero pair stuff, let's go to the first one. It says two. So we're going to draw two pluses because we have two positives. That's what positive two means. And we are asked to take away five positives. So we have one, two, we've got a problem. We don't have enough positives. We need to figure out a way to add positives without changing the value of the problem. The easiest way to do this is to add zeros. And let me show you why. Two minus five, if I came in and put plus zero, that's not gonna change the value. So we can add a zero. The way we add a zero is a plus and a minus. We come in and we put plus and minus in to represent that zero. And now we can cross off a third plus. Well, what if we add another zero? We haven't changed the value of the problem. We can add zero all day long. So we added a second zero, so we have plus minus. And now we can cross off that one. Let's add another zero. Add our zero pair, plus minus, and cross off that plus. Now note that we have taken away one, two, three, four, five pluses, and that we are left with three negatives, so our answer is negative three. What this part is saying in the directions is that if there are not enough, you're gonna have to add zero pairs, meaning you're gonna have to add a plus and a minus until you have enough x's to take away. We needed to add three zeros because we were missing three pluses to take those away. We know that we can add zero to any problem because by adding zero, it's not going to change the value of the problem. Putting plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero doesn't affect the problem at all because when we add zero, we're adding nothing. Let's take a look at the second one, negative two minus five. We come in and we say, hey, take away two negatives or excuse me, draw two negatives. We're now asked to take away five positives. We don't have five positives. We know that if we don't have enough, in this case any, we can add zero to give us enough. And if we take a look at it, we are gonna have to add five zeros. The reason we're gonna have to add five is because we currently have none to take away, so we need to add five. The reason we can't come in and just put plus five is because that's gonna change the value of the problem. So once we've added our five zeros, we come in and we take away the five pluses that we were asked to take away, and we note that we now have seven negatives remaining. The answer to negative two minus five is negative seven. Let's take a look at the next example. 2 minus negative 5. We have our two pluses, and we're asked to take away five negatives. We know that we do not have enough, so we have to add zeros. We're going to have to add five of them, in fact. You don't have to write that out. I just want you to be able to see it. Again, we have parentheses here just to remind us, because writing 2 minus negative 5 just looks funny without the parentheses. So we come in and we're going to add five zeros to give us enough negatives to take them away. We can now come in and take away our five negatives. And we end up seeing that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positives. So two minus negative five is seven. It's interesting that we had two positives, we took away five negatives, and we ended up with seven positives. 
you'll learn a little bit more about the reason why. So for right now, we're just drawing some pretty pictures. Going on to the last example, negative 2 minus negative 5. So we start with our two negatives. We're asked to take away five negatives. We don't have five negatives. We know that to add those negatives, we can't just put plus negative three because that changes the problem. But what we can do is we can add zeros. And in this case, we can add three of them because three zeros will give us enough negatives to take away. So we took away one, two negatives. There are three, four, five negatives. And we're left with three positives. So the answer to negative two minus negative dot five is positive three. Interesting that we had two negatives, we took away five negatives and ended up at positive three. Let's try our second modeling method, heaps and holes. Once again, remember we're gonna draw semicircles above for positive and semicircles below for negative. We are still drawing the first number to start with, in this case, the four. So we're gonna draw for four minus three, you all are smart, you know we're gonna end up with a positive one. But let's prove it. So we start with our four semicircles and hopefully yours look a little prettier than mine. Now, we are asked to take away three of those. The way we do this is you're gonna shade in. When you are shading in, do not shade them in to the point that you can't see them anymore. If you don't like shading them in, put a big X over it. You still need to be able to see that the semicircles were there and that you've taken them away. If you've, if you've shaded them totally out, you can't see them and also I can't see them. Your teacher can't see them. That's an important part that you need to be aware of. So we end up shading in the three or crossing off the three that we were asked to take away. And when we look, we're left with one heap left over. So we know that four take away three is one. Taking a look at the second example, negative four minus three. Since it's negative four, we come below. One, two, three, four. We're asked to take away three. We don't have three to take away. We know that when we don't have enough, that three is positive, not negative, we can add a zero. So in this case, we're gonna have to add three of them. To add a th three zeros, you're making sure that you're doing a semicircle above with the semicircle below. Now we have enough to come in and shade in the part that we wanna take away. So be careful if you're Xing them out. And then we note that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes, meaning we end up with negative seven. So negative four, take away three, will be negative seven. Four minus negative three. Well, let me remind you that when we write it, four minus negative three looks funny to have the minus negative without the parentheses, so that's why the parentheses are there. For four, we're gonna draw four heaps. One, two, three, four. When it comes to taking away three negatives, we don't have it. So we know we can add zero and we can keep adding it until we have enough. In this case, three of them. So we add one, two, three zeros. And we are asked to take away three negatives. So we're gonna shade in the bottom three semicircles. And then we note that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heaps. So we have positive seven. Four take away negative three is positive seven. Now let's go on to the last one. Negative four minus negative three. Remember that the reason the parentheses there is not to indicate order of operations, but because negative four minus negative three without the parentheses looks really weird. Starting with the first one, negative four. One, two, three, four. We are asked to take away three negatives. Good news for this one is we actually have three negatives to take away. So we come in and we shade them in. If you wanna X them, that's fine, but again, I think the shading's a little easier, especially if you do it so that you can still see the semicircles. We note that we have one hole left over, so the answer would be negative one. The final modeling method is the number line. And I'm pretty sure that any teacher will tell you this one is the one that for adding a lot of people, it makes total sense to them. 
for subtracting. It's the one that messes students up consistently the most. The thing to note is that if you're subtracting positive, you move to the left. And if you're subtracting negative, you move to the right. Think about this this way. If I have 5 minus 1, we know that to be 4. Look at the number line. If I've got 5 and I go back minus 1, I end up at 4. When I subtract positive, I move left. Well, if I'm subtracting a negative, I can't also move left. So that means we have to move right. That is what this part is saying, positive to the left and negative to the right. Starting out, we're going to start out the same way. 1 minus negative 3. So we go from 0, we go down, excuse me, negative 1. So at 0, we go to negative 1. Now we're asked to take away 3. We know that we're subtracting positive, so we're going to go back 3. 1, 2, 3. We end up at negative 4, so the answer to negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Take a look at the second example. Again, remember that negative, if you're subtracting positive, you move left. And if you're subtracting negative, you move right. And I shouldn't have done the minus sign. I should have written subtract. Okay, so for 1 minus negative 3, this is why when we did those other modeling methods, certain things worked out the way they did because I think this makes them, this makes the easy, or this is the easiest way to explain it, even though it's the most confusing to actually do, in my opinion. To do 1 minus negative 3, we're going to start at 0 and go to 1. We are then asked to take away negative 3. Remember that if we wrote it, 1 minus negative 3 looks funny without those parentheses. So we take away negative 3. We're subtracting a negative. We move to the right. 1, 2, 3, ending up at negative 4. Or excuse me, ending up at positive 4. Therefore, the answer to 1 minus negative 3 is positive 4. You have now modeled all three ways of subtracting integers.